Good evening and welcome to Hopkinton High School for tonight's varsity girls basketball game as the Westward Wolverines take on your hometown, Hopkinton Hillers. The Tri-Valley League is committed to the highest ideals of sportsmanship and establishing a healthy environment for interscholastic competition. The league will not tolerate negative statements or actions directed towards competitors, game officials, or fans in attendance. Such actions include taunting, trash talking, and the berating of players or officials. Please respect all decisions made by officials. Please respect fans, coaches, participants, and opponents alike. Thank you for helping create a positive, respectful, and fun environment here at HHS. And now for tonight's lineups. For the Westwood Wolverines. At forward, number 33, freshman Elizabeth Gill. At forward, number 22, Junior, Sarah Roycroft. At guard, number 10, senior, Hannah Bean. At guard, number one, senior captain, Alex Finn. At guard, number 21, senior captain, Fiona McGowan. The coach for the Westward Wolverines is Katherine Clifford. And now for your hometown, Hopkins and Hillers. At guard, number 23, freshman, Lauren Cho. At forward, number 21, sophomore, Caroline Connell. At guard, number 3, sophomore, Amelia Sincini. At guard, number 24, junior, Cameron McDonald. And at forward, number 34, junior, Ashley McDermott. The Hillers are coached by Mike Greco, Kerry Chatton, and Pat O'Brien. Now, please rise for the playing of our national anthem. HKN TV presents another edition of Girls Varsity Basketball. Hi, I'm Tim Haladic along with Steve Spector as your hometown Hopkinton Hillers host the undefeated Westwood Wolverines. So again, Steve, as I just mentioned, Westwood undefeated 4-0 on the year coming in facing a Hillers team that seems to be struggling offensively as of late. Well, yeah, and, and I think it's it's worth noting that the uh, the Hopkinton team is, you know, one of the youngest teams in, in, in recent memory, you know, with lots of freshmen and underclassmen, and, uh, you know, getting a lot of playing time and we saw that last you know last weekend when they right. played um, Foxborough and had a tough time with them and, and Foxborough obviously a uh, state champions and uh, you know to the to the Hillers credit they hung with them pretty good till about halftime and, right. and things got a little away from them and uh, I think just the, the lack of experience kind of came back to them uh, and kind of had an impact in the second half of the last game but you know it's a new it's a new chapter a new year and uh, we're psyched to get uh, I'm sure, I'm sure the Hillers are looking forward to uh, getting back in the court again after, after the way Foxborough ended. So it uh, should be a great game tonight. Absolutely. But it will be no easy task again against the uh, undefeated Wolverines, who already have wins this year over Medfield, who's always a challenge for Hopkinton, as well as Ashland, who gave Hopkinton fits earlier this season. But the first time these two teams are meeting this season, we'll see what the Hillers have to offer as they win the opening tip. Sure. A, a, a nice, fresh start for them is definitely Got to feel good, and uh, certainly they're going to have their hands full. Cho step back jumper, no good. Offensive rebound. Trouble getting it up. And a looks like a tie up there going to Westwood as Cameron McDonald, the uh, junior, fought for the offensive board but couldn't get it up. Uh, Westwood uh, 
fresh uh, has a freshman Elizabeth Gill looks she looks like she might be six two or three a freshman again you don't see too many freshmen big big centers in, in this in this league and she looks like uh, it'll be interesting to see how the Hillers deal with her Hillers in an aggressive man man to man trapping situation five oh that's right took a few steps before started dribbling the ball was Sarah Roycroft of Westwood first turnover of the game for both, either team both teams getting a their legs under them getting a feel for the game the pace and uh, good job by the Hillers creating a turnover there Cho drove for a second pulled it back was about to drive again but again kicked it back Aggressive man-to-man -man D. Connell called for the screen, drives, puts it up, forcing the issue there as Roycroft picks up her first foul of the game. Nice job by Caroline taking it strong to the hoop, and she drew two uh, Westwood Wolverines over there, and uh, number one, Alex Finn with foul, senior captain. Shooting two. Yeah, I said Roycroft originally. I thought it was going to be on her, but it looks like referee had a different opinion on that one yeah, either way. I was with you there, too. But <laughs> First free throw banks in for Connell. You can hear a pin drop around here. It's <laughs> quiet around here. Second one, no good. McDermott fights for the board, can't get it. Westwood on the break now. Good, good aggressive D by the Hillers. Somehow getting oh, out of trouble too bad. was Westwood. Fiona McGowan was stuck just past half court. Coach Greco can't be happy with that. Almost forced a turnover and then hit with a quick foul. Kim McDonald with a playing really aggressive D just crossed the line uh, as far as where the as far as the referee goes to call the foul there. It's her first foul. Cross court pass to Finn. She tries to get it down low to Gill. That's knocked out of bounds off of a Hiller. Nice stays with Westwood. Excuse me, nice play by the, looks like the clarinet player over there to <laughs> keep the ball in, in play. Just want to make a note of the. That's right, I, I believe the first time the band is in session here for the Hiller, the Hiller girls this season, as Cho takes the steal, takes it all the way down, gets blocked, recovers oh, nice. a nice pass from Connell to a cutting, to cutting McDonald, and she uh, hits the layup. A nice play there from the Hillers. Good start for the Hillers, too, and Cho showing some speed there. Beating everybody down the court, but uh, just couldn't con control or contain herself as she's going up for the, the layup, but was able to navigate a good uh, couple passes later for an easy bucket. So 3 nothing lead now for Hopkinton. The three from the corner, no good from Finn, excuse me, from Bean. But an offensive rebound from Gill in a layup makes it 3-2 to two game now. Oh, nice play by Ashley. McDermott gathered the loose ball and was able to dribble by the uh, approaching defender. And again, another layup for Hopkins in 5-2 to two lead. Really a good athletic move. She anticipated where the Wolverine player, uh, Elizabeth Gill, was going to nice go. Nice no-look pass from Hannah Bean. Got everybody on that one and found Gill, I believe, for the bucket there. Lots of scoring early here. 5-4 Hillers. Oh, Cho nice gets steal. picked by Bean. She's going to take it the whole way, up and in. Just like that, Westwood with four quick points, taking the 6-5 lead. Wow, that was pretty slick uh, defensive play by Hannah Bean, senior guard. Can't she miss her with those pink shoes on, that's for sure. Not very subtle. <laughs> Joe takes it and drives, left hand scoop. No good, but a foul going against Westwood. Good job by Cho taking kick, taking it strong. Had a couple of uh, Wolverine girls kind of collapsed on her and drew a foul on Elizabeth Gill, who's got two quick hoops. First free throw, good for Cho, the freshman. I'll tell you, we've seen we've seen uh, Cho and some of the other freshmen They're very composed. You know, there's a three or four freshmen on the, on the uh, roster that, that are all getting some playing time, and uh, Cho maybe the most of all of them. And uh, with Lily Morningstar, you know, looking at, she looks like she's got her uniform on over there. We'll see if she, she's quite ready to come in, and I know she's been out with her, her knee injury, and we hope she comes back 
uh, as soon as possible, but as obviously as soon as she's ready, and not until she's ready. But in the meantime, Cho has really done a really great job um, holding the fort down for a freshman, re very composed out there. Absolutely, and the Hillers need every bit they could get, as again, as you mentioned, as Morningstar and Olivia Gladue, two, uh, two guards still out, have been out the entire year. Morningstar, this was the first time I've seen her do pregame warm-ups. She had the, um, the, the device apparatus, whatever you want to call it, on her knee, and she took it off, so my, my thoughts are that she's not going to be entering this game, but it's nice to see her warming up anyway, as the three is launched from Hawkington, no good. Rebound goes to Westwood. Seven to six, Hiller lead after Cho's free throws a few possessions ago. Four minutes left here in the opening oh, nice, quarter. Nice, nice pass cut. again from Westwood. No good on the layup from Riley Murray. Three forty-four left in the first quarter. No substitutions as of yet. Looks like the Hillers have a few, a couple players ready to come in. Oh, too bad. Cameron McDonald with a unfortunate stutter step there that the referee interpreted as a travel. We've seen worse. <laughs> That's right. Uh, Lexi Trendle entering the game for the first time, as well as Kylie Hardenbrook. So those subs, they must have heard you. Yeah. Come, come right in. First ones for the Hillers. Still 7-6, Hopkinton lead. Baseline drive. Shot no good from Westwood. Good hustle. Caitlin Curtin, bit too strong. Cho brings it up now for the Hillers. Hardenbrook oh, drives. Got. Good idea with the pass, but didn't quite know where her teammate Trendle was. Results in a turnover. Hannah Bean stops and pops, knocks oh, it down. A very smooth-looking play right there. W with or without those pink sneakers, she's... You know, looks like she's got quite a, quite a good game, solid solid player, really good balance, and uh, she's got a couple good good buckets, uh, at least two that I can remember already. Cho, the nice uh, cut, oh, hit with the uh, nice pass from her teammate there, can't convert on the tough layup. Oh, no, nowhere to go there. Ill-advised pass there from Sarah Roycroft. Took it and kind of chucked it out of bounds. A little, well, a bit too far ahead of her teammate. But as far as uh, Lauren Cho, the freshman, this is her second uh, tough matchup in a row. Last week we saw um, her Foxborough's point guard, whose, his name's escaping me right now, but she was an incredibly tough matchup for her. And again, um, uh, Lauren's dealing with Hannah Bean tonight, who's already proven to be a pretty skilled ball handler. No question about it. And again, there's a few years of the age difference in there too. Well, tough. A steal from Westwood, a cutting Roycroft, almost looked like she carried it there, but collected it and hit the layup. Excuse me, that was Murray with the layup. Unfortunate there. Um, I think it was, I, I couldn't tell who lost the ball earlier. She just kind of left the ball hanging out there and the Wolverine uh, player just grabbed it. Gonna Sense, take a little bit better care of the ball there. Sensony with a tough pass there, stolen away by Westwood. Now Bean controls it for the Wolverines. 10-7, Wolverines, 145 left. Pass inside, Ooh, Sarah Roy Looks like a walk. Got hit in the head with it. Then dished it off to Olivia Holbrook, who drove, took the shot. No good on the attempt, but two free throws coming up. Looks like uh, Amelia Sensony with her first foul. Uh, a good foul. Definitely uh, Westwood player number 14, Olivia Holbrook, had a clear lane to the, to the hoop. A bit and short uh, on that first free throw there. Some subs for both teams. Hannah Bean takes her first rest of the game. Rather fast moving first quarter. Yep, just 137 left. A three point, Ooh, geez, three point lead tough. for the Wolverines after two missed free throws there from Olivia Holbrook. And Holbrook almost makes up for it and seals the inbound pass. Luckily, Kiki Fossbender is able to corral it there for Hopkinton. Oh, nice. Oh, good idea. Too many Wolverines in the way as Connell launches the three. 
Nothing there. Tough to hit the uh, rim for either team right now. As a good effort there from Trendle to try to save it. Uh, she stepped out of bounds before she was able to hit that ball. Yeah, I mean, the, the uh, things have offensively have slowed down a little mm -hmm. bit since the, I wouldn't say it, a t it was a torrid pace earlier, right, but things right. have, the shooting from both teams has uh, certainly cooled off a bit here in the last few minutes. 10-7 Westwood at the moment. Just over a minute left in the quarter. Pass inside to Gill. She gave it up and then cut down to the lane. 10 seconds left on the shot clock. Nice drive there from Finn. Took the ball, made a quick decision to drive to the hoop. No good on the shot again, but two more free throws for Westwood. Yep, good aggressive move by Alex Finn, senior captain. Showed some quickness there. Lulu Murphy with the foul. Her first. And Finn breaks the tide there, knocking down both of those free throws. 12-7 lead for Westwood. Two. Lulu Murphy drives, taking advantage. Oh, nice. nice dish inside back to Lulu. She was, she was blocked. Good hustle by Lulu to keep the ball, but then eventually a little kind of a scramble and the Wolverines ended up with it somehow. Active hands from Westwood there. I believe Caitlin Curtin picked up the steal there. 30 seconds left now in the opening quarter. Gill takes it, turns around, launches the shot, no good. A lot of bodies in her way, might have affected the shot there. 20 seconds left, shot clock off. Probably a one shot situation here. Westwood in a in a man-to-man, -man. 10 seconds now. I believe Westwood has scored the last six points of this one. Murphy launches Ooh, the shot, shot too hard off the backboard. Two seconds left for Westwood to get a shot. Launched too hard off the backboard, but a good attempt nonetheless as the Westwood Wolverines take a 12-7 advantage after this first uh, opening quarter. Yeah, well, I, I guess it's... Uh I guess you'll just look at the silver lining there. You know, they're down by five, but that's a significant improvement over, over uh, last, the last game uh, after they got kind of kind of blown out in the second half uh, to, to kind, of, kind of gather themselves in, uh, against a 4-0 team, only down by five points. And uh, I think that was a good first quarter for the Hillers against a very you know, strong Westwood team. All right, so we mentioned a bit about the Hillers' offensive struggles over the past three games. They scored 32 in an overtime win against Halston. They only scored 22 in the following game against Ashland and then up that by one, scoring 23 against Foxborough, which we've mentioned a few times. Uh, Foxborough is most likely going to be heading back to the playoffs. They were a very, very complete team, but so far seven points here in the opening quarter. Um, looks like they're going to be hopefully get around at least 30 points in this one. Again, we'll, we'll see. The, um, the offense kind of sputtered a bit in the latter half of that first quarter, but um, not, not as many as the mistakes that we saw from the last two games. Not as many um, like hot potato type passes, things like that. Sure. Well, I think, uh, you know, with the big challenge of a Tri-Valley League foe like Westwood, it's an opportunity for the Hillers to, uh, to knock them off. So right. they're in the game and start in the second quarter. Both teams, you know, a little tentative. Not, no, no one's really, you know, blowing the, blowing the roof off with their offensive, uh, you know, shooting and everything, so. Close to a five Ooh, second almost, violation and there. And then <laughs> almost uh, passed it to uh, McDonald there who was coming out of bounds, yeah. from out of bounds. A little forgiving, I think, by the ref there. <laughs> but we'll take it, we're the, we're the hometown exactly. announcer, so. <laughs> Cho Ashley wanted that up. ball back. McDermott gives it back to her. Now ball back down to McDermott, Gotta trying to carve it. out some space, she launches. Oh, oh, oh. Looked like it was partially blocked, but Westwood's Noble wasn't complaining too much, so perhaps the right call there. Two free throws either way coming for McDermott. Yeah, I, I would say that was, you know, we I know you and I have both seen a lot worse than that. <laughs> that that's that gone without the call, so we'll take it here. And we could use, uh, and then, you know, and, and then the Hillers got to take advantage of those opportunities and, and hit the free throws. So, right. you know, they're not going to hit all of them probably, but, you know, they got to at least hit one out of two. 
So no pressure on Ashley. I just put a bunch of pressure on her here. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, she's a good player, and and I'm sure she's going to hit this one. Oh, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Ashley. Get some love I, I set myself up for that. <laughs> <laughs> she must have heard you because that ball took a few, a couple of bounces there, but somehow found its way home. Noble Ooh. catches the awkward pass. Somehow Westwood gets the offensive board. Good D. Oh, oh too bad. Gill recovering a loose ball there. Bean, tough pass there, was knocked away, but Westwood still recovering. Shot clock winding down. Oh, the tough shot. The floater from the baseline, no good from Finn, but another offensive rebound to Gill. She just throws it up. Not a prayer going in on that one, but she got what she was looking for. A foul called there and two more free throws. It looks Let's like it's a, a, a non-shooting. Oh, it shooting. wasn't a show. Okay. Look. Yeah. But nevertheless, uh, those are, those are uh, things that the, you know, Coach Greco is going to have to talk to their uh, half times, talk about offense, giving up offensive rebounds, just going to box out. Uh, 33, Elizabeth Gill of Westwood. She's a big, big kid, but get to put a body on her. And the Hillers need to do that more. She's got herself a few offensive rebounds already. I believe another foul there going against Amelia Sensony, her second one, after a kind of an ill-advised shot there from Bean with a full shot clock about two feet from behind the three-point line. But Westwood again taking advantage. Tough a shot. A tough hook shot there. Fiona McGowan gets the kind roll, just as kind as on McDermott's last free throw, but this one worth two, 14-8 lead for Westwood. Aggressive defense from Bean there. She pokes it right out. And she stepped over the half court line. Yeah, and I, I agree with Coach Greco. He's, if I can interpret it from here from the other side <laughs> of the court, the ball was tipped, which caused the ball, you know, the Hiller player to, to step on the line to get the ball back. So, uh, you know, I would agree with Coach Greco there. Noble gets the ball down low. She muscles it up and in. Hattie Noble. Making her impact felt after coming in and see, I believe at the beginning of the second quarter, already making some plays. Wolverines, uh, they're, they're showing a man-to-man a -man situation, but they're also trapping whenever they can do that. Yeah, who, whenever the ball swings, they're rushing over to the ball, ball handler and giving them fits as a missed shot there from Hopkinton, tipped out of bounds, stays with the Hillers. As McDermott takes a seat. Lexi Trendelin, freshman. Cho, oh, nice. nice cutting. Oh, too bad. Was under the hoop, though, but an offensive rebound for Sensony. Her shot too strong, and Noble grabs the board. And Sensony almost got a, her third foul there from behind. Luckily for Hopkins, she did not. A little carry. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't think it was a travel, but it did. She was still dribbling, but I'm pretty sure it was a carry. That's yeah, at least what it looked like up here. Like kind of a hip, uh, kind of got stuck on her hip there for a bit. Well, end result is yeah. the right one. So yeah. Hopkinson takes over. Right call, yep. 16 to eight lead, 535 left here in the first half. Chose pass tipped. And a scrum for it on the ground is a, it's another jump ball. This one stays with the Hillers. Like a shorter bench tonight than in in the past few games. Uh, just my, we have four bench players, so it looks like someone might either someone else might be hurt. I we'll have to s see about that. I know L Lily and and uh, Olivia are out with injuries, and I don't see Brooke Doherty out there tonight. Uh, I can't tell. If that's her in the street clothes or not. But right. anyway, only four bench players uh, or four. Only nine available players for the Hillers, which is a, a shorter shorter bench. So we'll see how that goes. And in some cases, that can help the players that are on the floor to get a little more continuity. Right. But and no, no, no issues with fouls uh, at the moment. And this Westwood defense seems to be giving Hopkinton some trouble there. They don't quite know how to handle it as Cho ends up with an open two-point shot. No good. Noble with the rebound.
McGowan in trouble. Finds help. Ooh, that's, a, that's a good call by the ref. It was a double tip. Off the hands of Noble after being tipped by Hopkinton just before Noble touched it, but stays with Hopkinton and Coach Greco calling a timeout. Well, you know, it, uh, it was 12-7 after, after the first quarter, and right. it's 16-8, so, you know, the, uh, with 440 left in the second quarter, so they've, you know, the Hillers, to their credit, even though they're not scoring a whole bunch, they're, they're playing some tough D. Both teams playing tough D, right. kind of swarming, and, mm -hmm. and the shots aren't falling for either team, so, you know, uh, we haven't seen really and correct me if I'm wrong, Tim. I don't know if there's been any three pointers tonight. I don't. I don't believe. I yeah. think only one or two have been attempted, yeah. even. Uh, but no. Yeah. No uh, convert conversions on any three point shots. Um, a lot of free throw attempts, but neither team shooting remarkably well from the line. Right. So that leaves us with a 16-8 score with a 4:40 left here in the second quarter. Yeah, in contrast, when they when the Hillers started the game uh, against Foxborough, uh, it was last Friday night. I think it was last Friday night. Saturday. Saturday. Mm -hmm. Saturday. Thank you. <laughs> um, Foxborough came out and hit their first five three point. Yeah, that was, and it was, it was incredible. To two barrage, with a, you yeah. know, just to start the game. So, um, and and again, the Hillers with their youth and a little bit of a short bench. So I get a, you got to give them credit tonight so far, and hopefully they'll hang in there and uh, we'll have a good finish. Again, I want to mention that uh, there there are two starting guards, uh, Gladu and Morningstar, still out with injuries. Um, so not only did they have to deal with losing that incredible senior class from last year, but the two people they were going to lean on the most haven't been able to play once this year. So quite a, uh, a change here for the Hillers, trying to combat as best they can. As Elizabeth Gill was hit with a three-second violation there, negating that layup, still 16-8. to eight. Well, the, the Hillers have done a nice job neutralizing her. Uh, you know, she's got some big height. Like I said earlier, she looks to be about 6'2", or they're really a big big girl. And uh, they've neutralized her pretty well. Hiller's making Westwood move a lot defensively. Another three-point nice shot job there, no by good. Lett. Trendle got the offensive board, but getting right in there to take it away was Sarah Roycroft. Hiller fans want a foul, but it looked like just Roycroft was uh, more aggressive there in the Trendle and forced the jump ball. Or McGowan, I believe, actually, that was. Ooh, there's a tip. Finn's pass too late there, knocked away by Hopkinton. Stays with the Wolverines. Another good play by the, there's a couple drummers over there in the high school band. We've got to give them. The drummer with the the white set made a heck of a play, lefty, to make get that ball back and play. <laughs> <laughs> Got to call him out when you see him. Oh, that was a, it was a heck of a play. You don't see that too often by the drummer. Pass inside to Gill. Bodies getting banged around down there. But That's then a foul. Looks like yeah, Gill try a little too aggressive trying to get that offensive rebound. It's like first and ten there by Gill, kind of ta <laughs> literally tackled. Not very subtle with that play. And that's her second foul, so they got to keep an eye on that with yep. three minutes left in the, or just over three minutes left in the second quarter. Looks like she's coming out. Hiller's hanging tough. They could use a couple of hoops. And they're having a tough time uh, penetrating this. Westwood defense yeah. is really, really tough. They're making they're making Westwood move a lot, but they're they're not getting a lot of great shots as a result of it. Here's a chance for one down low, but nice a nice block. block. Sarah Roycroft. He's rejecting that one. Another tall uh, Westwood player. Definitely a six-footer plus. Bean with it finds the open fin down low. A nice pass from her. Shot no good from Murray. Good rebound by Sensini. Sensini launches a three hmm. just off the front rim. Rebound goes to Westwood. It's a good shot, a little deep, but still wide open. You got to take it. Yeah, she was open, yeah, yep. in rhythm, just a bit short. 
Gill with a nice, or not Gill, excuse me, she's out now. Uh, Murray with a nice cut. Just tipped away by Hopkinson, though. Two minutes left in the quarter. Not a whole lot of scoring this quarter. Really, really light scoring. As he I, launches the three. Of course, uh, <laughs> right in my face with that one. Right on cue, right? <laughs> That's the first three of the game as Bean didn't oh, hesitate. Oh, nice move by Caroline. Connell hits the ground hard, fouled from behind. Good sportsmanship by Sarah Roycroft helping Caroline off the floor. Good cut by Caroline to the to the hoop. A little out of control, but st still a really good aggressive move, and she drew the foul, so she got two, two freebies. Her free throw a bit strong off the back of the rim there. No good. And Hopkinton struggling a bit from the free throw line here today. Not taking advantage of those opportunities. Yeah, that would, you know, they've missed a few at least, so. Second one, same thing. Even stronger off Too the bad. backboard. Nineteen to eight, one thirty five left in the first half. Almost a three second. Yeah, another three second violation on Westwood. They want to take advantage of that height, but they seem to just kind of be parking it down there. Yeah, they're camping out for having a cup of coffee in there. You, you, <laughs> eventually, you're going to get caught in there. That's, that's, you don't see the three second call too often, and we no. just saw two in about three minutes. So mm -hmm. I would say the Hillers are still hanging around. They got to get a couple hoops here to, to keep some momentum going into the half, would be super helpful. Baseline oh, jumper, knocked you. down. Kylie Hardenbrook. Right on cue for us there. Thank you, Kylie. Good job, 19-10. Westwood at the moment. That's, act, that's actually the first bucket for Hopkinton this entire quarter. Uh, they had a free throw earlier after it was 12-7 after the first. First two-pointer, first uh, field goal in general for the Hillers there. Tough. Tough to come back wow, with only one bucket in the quarter, but still only down nine with just over a minute here left in the first half. And both teams with five fouls, so we, neither team got appears to uh, be in a position to get to one-on-one -on -one situation. Murray's shot a Good bit box too out. strong. Yeah, great box out from the freshman Trendle there. It's the only way she kept Westwood off the, off the glass there. Cho drives. Oh, too bad. Good idea to try to find Trendle just a bit out of her reach. A little strong, a little float, a little more of a floater would have been, a, a, or, or a bounce pass. You know, easy to say from here, you know, Monday morning quarterback here, but. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't mean we can't be oh, right sometimes. Oh, nice move, but a little strong off the board. Yeah, being a nice, nice drive there. Couldn't convert. Westwood, another offensive rebound though. Baseline jumper, no good, but another rebound. Somehow that one rolls in. Riley Murray taking advantage. And Westwood taking advantage of their height. Uh, dominating the offensive glass. 21-10 now. Oh, sorry to cut you off there, Steve. No. Uh, 15 seconds left. Shot clock off for Hopkinton. They can cut it to single digits if they get a bucket here. Sensony tries to recover. Mm -hmm. No, ball poked away. Five seconds. Bean looking to take it all the way. Blocked. Nice block. Bean trying to do a little too much there at the end. McDermott knew I was coming and rejected that ball. But a 21 to 10 lead for, for Westwood after the first half. And again, only one bucket for the Hillers in that second quarter. Yeah, I mean, it was a nine, you know, that qu quarter breaking it out. Nine to three was a scoring to in total. So not a lot of scoring in general. Um, silver lining is they're holding a really strong Westwood team to only 21 points in the first half. So. You know, I'd say, I think it's safe to say the Hillers are still, you know, definitely in the game here as, uh, you know, based on their effort. Uh, they, they, good job by, by both teams in the first half. And we're going to take a break, uh, head into the halftime festivities, and then we'll be back uh, to see if the Hillers can pull, out, pull this thing out of the second half.
Tim Halatic and Steve Spector back with you here for the uh, second half. A 21 to 10 Westwood lead. The undefeated Westwood Wolverines standing pat against the Hopkinton Hillers who are struggling offensively. Only uh, one bucket there and one free throw in the second quarter. But uh, we're going to see, Steve, if they can uh, muster up any more offense here for the rest of the way. Yeah, it's, a, it's been a bit of a trend in the last few games as we've seen, you know, lack of offense. And again, it's attributed to a little bit of the youth here. But um, right. certainly some youthful energy. And, and that translated into some really tough deep tough defense um, that the Hiller girls have played in holding a, an undefeated team to 21 points in the first half. You right. know, you got to give them props for that. Both teams came out really late from the their halftime discussion. Uh, no warm-ups. They, they just went right to their huddle. and Right, yeah, nothing, yeah. no warm-ups at all. So uh, that's that's like a 15-minute little Pep talk. break, break <laughs> from touching the basketball, and hopefully they're stretching. Let's we'll see, see, see how both teams come out in the third quarter. Hillers will start with it as Cho takes the ball handling duties to start. Again, down 11. We'll see what the Hillers have to offer, at least offensively, for the second half. Cho gets the ball poked away, stolen by Roycroft. Gill drives, good idea to dish it off. She gets it back, drives again. Offensive foul. Plows there right over. Sensony, charge going against Gill, her third foul. Yeah, that's a big foul. I'd say that's worthy of a, to say that's a that's a development that, you know, if they can get her uh, and they leave her in the game, uh, you know, they'll probably be a good strategy to go after her to get her fourth. Just take it to the hoop on her. Sensony in trouble. Gets it to Connell. Connell gets the ball poked away. Almost out of bounds, but nice job. Sensony open from three. Good defense by play. Westwood. McDermott tried Ooh. to turn and launch a hook shot, but either slid the pivot foot, took an extra step there. A travel was called. Turnover there for the Hillers. Couldn't really tell from here. We're, gonna, we're just going to give the, the ref the benefit <laughs> of the doubt on that call. Yeah, they've been calling a good one yeah, so far, I, this one. so Yes. I would agree, and Coach Greco didn't really protest uh, too aggressively there, so. Ooh, tough pass, yeah, right? Pass sailing from not the hands of Roycroft. Right to the gentleman in the third, third row, <laughs> a heck of a play. He was ready for it. Yep. Had plenty of time to see it coming. <laughs> right. It's a nice bounce pass right to him. Pass to Connell. It looks like a foul as uh, Caitlin Curtin came from behind. A bit too aggressively. But that's been Westwood's uh, defensive game all, all of this uh, first half in a minute and a half or so. Uh, they've been very aggressive. So I guess he take the good with the bad in that instance as Cho tries oh, to drive. Ball poked away again. Active Wolverine hands knocked that out of bounds. Well, on that, on that out of bounds play, you just got to make your presence known and get big, and, and you know, get a, give the, give the inbound passer something to, to pass to, and make yourself, a, you know, a, a good enough target where the ball can get to you. And, and the Hillers didn't do that in that play. And during uh, one of those out of bounds plays, Gill did take a seat with her third foul. Just just a deep two there from Westwood's uh, McGowan. Rolls out of bounds. Off of a Wolverine. Looks like Hopkinton will take over. Well, we've got uh, almost two minutes into the third quarter. No scoring yet uh, by either team. 21-10 still. Well, the sense that he got away with a carry there. Coach, Westwood's coach there, Catherine Clifford, noticed it. Referees neglected to call oh, that nice one. Sense that on the other end. Might have been partially blocked. Either way, no good on the attempt. Cameron McDonald trying to contain. Ooh, that's Being shot Oof. up and in. Probably could have been an and one on that one. Wow. The uh, tough floater, baseline floater. Hannah Bean with a, I think it's her third hoop of the night. She, yeah, she's hit the only three pointer of the, of the game thus far. Yeah. 
three-pointer there from Hopkinton. Almost looked like it went in, but just a bit short of the hoop there from McDonald. Her three no good. 23 to 10 lead now for Westwood. 5.05 left here in the third quarter. Nice D by the Hillers. Nice switching by Cho and Ashley. Roycroft's pass knocked out of bounds by Hopkinton. Westwood stays in possession. Looks like Riley Murray will come out onto the court as well as Julia Dolly, her first appearance in this one. Nice. It's like a double tip again. Caroline Connell with a, just got a fingertip on the ball and then it went off the, the Westwood player, so balls back to the Hillers. Bean again aggressive there, but Cho able to corral that one. Again, Bean picks it right out of the freshman's possession. No good on the layup though. Ooh, caught a break there. Bean, Ooh, Bean not happy with herself after missing that layup. Definitely some yeah, body def contact probably a, there. Yeah, definitely a foul Absolutely. there on Murray. Miss, miss called there. I'm not really sure how that could not have been a foul to be honest with you. Yeah, and it was, there was nobody in the way. Um, no bodies to block that contact, so. Confusing one there nonetheless. Nice pass down low though. Leads with three for Dolly. Her shot a bit too strong. Both teams coming out flat here in third quarter. Only one bucket, 23-10. Almost just, uh, just over four minutes left in the third quarter. Very close to the halftime score, so not a whole lot happening offensively, but a whole, lot of, a, yeah. lot, a whole lot of tough defense being played, that's the for sure. Yeah, they're, get, they're getting decent opportunities, but they're just the shot's not falling for either, either side here. Ooh, tough play. No good on the shot there from McDonald. Westwood down on the other end. Layup wow, up and a, in. That's a heck of a play by McGowan. Fiona McGowan, senior captain. Great athletic move. Somehow contorted her body, got the ball within a split second. Turned around. Oh, there you go. Nice play by Lauren. Joe drives. Beauty. Nice play. Finger roll up and in. Timeout called there from Coach Greco. Cho, the nice drive, gets the first bucket for Hopkinton in quite a while. That's great. Good job by Lauren. Uh, saw the opportunity, saw the seam, and she took it right to the hoop. She's got some speed. Definitely split, split the uprights, as they say, and uh, nice finish. And uh, at this time, while the band in the background is going on, we want to acknowledge our incredible staff here keeping us together for the most part tonight. Uh, Director Tom Dings doing graphics, Samantha Dings. And on our cameras tonight, Mary Arnott, Bob Hamilton, and John Rich doing a great job. Thanks, thanks to everybody for your time tonight and as always. As we get a picture of the band there, who again, I believe this is the first time they've been here for the girls tonight. Hopefully they can inspire good last three minutes in fourth quarter for this one because uh, as of this, the third quarter and the second quarter, they've they've had two buckets and a and just a free throw. So not a lot of offensive success after that after the seven points in the first quarter, but still only down 13. So two quick threes or a shot and a couple free throws and they're right back in it, but just not much happening offensively. Yeah, it's a <clears throat> opportunity for the Hillers to. You know, there's plenty of time left in the game. It, like to your right. point, you just gotta you need a couple of a couple of things happening for them. Lauren Cho, I believe, is taking her first break of the night. She's gonna sleep well tonight after <laughs> running running around, but she's doing her best, and all the Hiller girls are playing playing really tough so far. Yeah, getting coached up uh, by Carrie Chatton on the side there. Looks like she's not gonna be out for long. Carrie Chatton and a thousand, a thousand point scorer herself. I'm sure Cho would love to put her name up on that list. It's like Bob Hamilton, our cameraman to our right, had a had an inclination to dive after that ball as it went by him, but he he thought better to you know maintain the uh, the camera. Yeah, we can't have any injuries to our crew here yeah, tonight. That would be tough. No understudies in the uh, audience tonight. <laughs> Lula Murphy bringing it up court.
And Westwood still aggressive in their on-ball defense. Murphy saw an opportunity. Westwood late on the uh, rotation there. Blocking foul going against the Wolverines. That's their third foul of the half, and the Hillers have none. Uh, 2.48 left in the third quarter, 25-12. Good idea by Lulu because the shot clock was winding down. You know, I think Hillers are having trouble getting shots off, and why not take it to the hoop? Dolly with the steal. Pass to Murray, another nice pass to Finn. Her shot up and in. Good fast break sequence there from Westwood. 27-12 now with 2.30 left in the third. Finn did a great job here for those younger players. She, she kept herself under control with a little six or seven footer, with no backboard, really had to have a nice touch on that mm -hmm. shot. Not as, not as easy as it looked. Oh, too bad, Caroline. The strip, and again, Finn on the other side, Jones. diving on the floor with some Hillers. Connell and Sensony both on the floor, too. But Finn fearless, fearlessly diving in there. A quick whistle, but uh, there was just four or five bodies rolling around the floor there, so I think the, the ref just had seen enough there. <laughs> <laughs> it was, a, and the ball goes back to the Wolverines. Two minutes or so left in the third quarter. 27-12 now. Uh-oh, need some help. Finn drives, another nice take, but no good on the shot. Couldn't get the backboard on that one. Under control. Murphy Under control. takes it out. Drive, tough shot, but fouled is Kiki Fossbender. Forcing the issue there, two free throws coming as a result. Riley Murray, I believe, with her, her second foul. Hillers, uh, you know, they've, they've had some swings at the bat, so to speak, at the foul line. And uh, <laughs> nice to see one go down here. Kiki Fossbender hitting the first of two. Good job. 2-2 two, two from the stripe there for Fossbender, the freshman. Hiller's showing a little bit of a, that's a, almost a travel. Looked like a travel right there. Good job. Cho almost had the ball taken away and then almost traveled herself. That's a good, that's a little, good momentum uh, for the Hillers on that play. Create the turnover, now they need to create a hoop opportunity. Eight seconds on the shot clock. Cho, nice tough shot. loader, knocks it down. Nice poise there from the freshman. Better execution to knock down the tough loader. Got some momentum, a couple baskets in a row. First time tonight, I think. Finn, nice no-look pass. Murray left wide open as a result. But when Alex Finn has decided to uh, drive the ball, she does so with little hesitation. And that forced the collapse from the Hillers defense. Fossbender launches the two-point shot. No good. Ooh, that's off of Green. Yeah, off of Gill, I believe. Ship. Good uh, tip from behind from the Hillers to force a tough, tough rebound for Gill, and she wasn't able to hold on. So 47 seconds left in the third quarter, 29-16. Hillers hanging around. Sensony launches the three, too strong. Rebound goes to Bean. Gill backs down, turns around, launches the shot. She was fouled, it looks like, by Cho. Yeah, I mean, that's their first. That's the Hillers' first foul of the second half with 23 seconds left in the third quarter. They, and it's uh, Lauren Cho's first foul of the evening. Yeah, tough break for Cho there. I believe uh, arguably, maybe definitely, the smallest player on the court there against the biggest player on the court. Not much she could do there, but prevented the shot, prevented the uh, conversion on the shot, and then Gill misses the first free throw. No kind bounce on the second one. Oh, too oh, bad. wow, it's a tough break there. I thought that number 14, Olivia Holbrook, had knocked that out, but apparently off of a Hiller last. And Westwood 
0 for 2 on the free throws, but gets the ball back. Good D by the Hillers. Fifteen seconds left in the quarter. Shot clock off. Hillers trying to contain Westwood. Oh, there it is. Finn gets it batted back, but she takes it. The nice baseline shot, no good. Bean with two seconds left. Pass over to Gill. She launches the three, short of the mark. And after all is said and done, after that third quarter, 29 to 16 lead for Westwood. It looks like we're handed over to the floor for what looks like the 50-50 raffle. So let's pick it out. All right. Tonight's number is 118350. That is 118350. If you're tonight's winner, please come to the table over there. We'll have your money for you. Thank you so much, and thank you to everybody who played. Steve, did you check your tickets there? What do, what do we got? You know, I didn't win again. I can't ah, believe it. Come on. But I guess you have to get a ticket in order to have a chance, right? I, hey, yeah. You know? <laughs> it was a scramble to get here for the game at 6.30, coming from work, which uh, I'm not complaining. I love doing these games. Uh, you know, <laughs> uh, it's fun to do, do, do the games with you and, uh, and everybody here. But, uh, I, you know, I'm old for my career here for in the 50-50 in the raffle. You know, I was hoping uh, Mike Terosian would, you know, buy someone on our behalf, but that, that hasn't happened yet. I don't know. we got to have to talk to him about that. We'll talk to management. You know, <laughs> and there's no pizza. There's no soft drinks. We'll get I in mean. touch with our agents. <laughs> sure, they won't, won't take too long. So, um, again, our, our, our uh, staff, Tom Ding, Samantha Dings, Mary Arnott, Bob Hamilton, John Rich, thank you all for keeping the game moving. And it's, uh, you know, that last quarter, I guess you see some improvement. Uh, it was nine to six Westwood in the in that third quarter, and it's 29-16 uh, overall. But the Hillers are you know playing a, an undefeated team pretty tight. They could use a couple of quick hoops to get started. Connell drives, Almost dishes out to Sensini. Good defense there from Holbrook as she saw the pass come and knocked it away, prevented a Hiller basket. Good D by Lauren Cho. Cross-court pass to Finn. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Good D by the Hillers still. Being the no-look pass down to Gill. She has not much there. Finn Two seconds. launches a quick shot off the back of the back uh, nice. of the rim Rabbit. there. But Holbrook was fighting for that one. And, uh, but luckily, Hopkinton forces a jump ball. Looks like this one's staying with the Wolverines, though. A really good sequence by the Hillers uh, defensively forced Westwood to launch one with like one second left in the shot clock and and uh, kind of a pr pretty big bounce off the rim. Oh, good D by, oh, too bad. Caroline, I believe. Good job by Caroline. Uh, yeah, Connell, steal good, 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 getting her hands in there, knocking that one away because Gill had a basket. The pass got to her, but Connell did not let that happen. Westwood again, though, another opportunity to get points on this possession. Bean thought about the quick three. Now she chose, chooses to drive. Layup no good. Oh, that's too bad. Caroline, uh, we've seen a lot worse. Again, she's she definitely was over the top, but she's much taller, long arms. Yeah, it, looked, it looked pretty clean. Yeah. I mean, I think it went off of her out of bounds, but I, I don't think I wouldn't have called a foul on that yeah, particular I would, one. I would agree with you there. Roycroft slipped, nope. lost possession of the ball. Ouch, awkward, hope she's all right. Tough spill, almost fell face first. Still 29-16, Westwood leads 6.35 here in the final quarter. McDermott inside. Gonna launch it. Back to Connell. Nice oh, bounce beauty. pass inside to McDermott. who is fouled and two free throws coming. That's the sixth foul now, I believe. 
Yeah, we'll or see fifth for foul. sure. Okay. I, I thought it was a six. I thought they hadn't updated the, uh, the board yet. Yeah. But um, so but depending on that situation, the Hillers might have free throws for the rest of the way here. So McDermott knocks down that one. Last foul was on Olivia Holbrook Jr. for Westwood. Ashley McDermott hits the first of two. Plenty of time, you know. Uh, it's not like Westwood's shooting lights out here, so. Exactly. Good job Second by Ashley. Second free throw good for McDermott. She went 0 for 2 on her last trip. 2 for 2 on that one. 11 point lead now for Westwood. Hillers need to stop. Bean dribbles through the press. But Westwood pulls it back out. Pass inside to Gill. Nice look there from Bean. Gill knocks down the bucket. Certainly nice uh, offensive sequence for Westwood. Cho wanted to drive the whole way, got stripped. Gets it down low. Now Sensini launches the three. Oh, in and out, too bad. Tough shooting day for Sensini. There you go. Mc yeah, McDermott grabbed the ball and kind of tried to avoid Gill and ended up walking in the process. That's just an unfortunate, I don't want to say series of events. See, that was a good steal. It just, that, was, that was the right call. Just unlucky. 31-18 with 5.45 left in the game. Nice trap. Being good pass to get out of it. Jumper, no good, but Noble with the rebound. She can't get it. Quick whistle I there. I mean, I, I think. Uh, I mean, I think her foot ended up touching out of bounds, but he called that, I believe, before she had gone out of bounds. I know, but it was almost anticipating it. Right. Almost, yeah. <laughs> um, but a timeout called, I believe, from Coach Greco after that one, leaves us at exactly five minutes and 30 seconds left here in the fourth, a 31-18 uh, Westwood lead. But um, Hillers have gotten a few free throws in this one, but it's kind. It's almost. It's a backbreaker when Westwood can go down and just get a quick bucket and erase all the all the work that Hopkinton just did. They're going to need to start making some buckets sooner rather than later. Yeah, and you know, it's sort of the, uh, you, you mentioned it earlier, Tim, with the the total points that the Hillers are are, are averaging, I guess you could say, over the last three or four games right. is in the 20s. I right. think. I don't yeah, know the exact number, so, right. but you know, we're kind of in that same range again. And that's not going to get a lot of you know, generate a lot of W's, but mm -hmm. but again, it's there's there's time, and they need to hit a couple threes, or, you know, one or two threes in a row, and they're they're kind of within striking distance. But in the meantime, it looks like again a shorter bench. I'm looking at the number of players on the roster, and I only see nine available bodies. Mm -hmm. So, right, the girls are playing their hearts out tonight, and uh, we'll see how it goes. But uh, to your to your point earlier, their their defense has been. In, in those same games they have, and besides the one against uh, Foxborough, which, again, not many teams are gonna come out with that win, their defense has been very good all year long. So it, once once these shots start falling, they're gonna start pulling out some Ws against some of these teams, because their defense is really, again, like I, like I just said, has really been terrific to start the year. As a Gill makes another bucket there, opening up a 15 point lead. A bit too strong with the body there. Noble hit with the blocking foul. The next foul for, uh, next foul on Westwood will put the Hillers in a one-on-one -on -one situation for the rest of the game. 15-point lead, they could use a, a good hoop here. There it is. Launch it. The three no good from McDonald. Grab oh. it. Unaware of the pass was oh, Riley Murray. Somehow that goes Westwood's way. Oh, no, nope, never mind. Reversal fortune there for the Hillers. They take over. The Westwood coach uh, was trying to influence that play just slightly and she didn't, didn't go her way. So we, we really couldn't see it up here. So we'll take the ref, ref's uh, word for it there. I want to mention now, uh, haven't mentioned it yet, next game here for the Hillers will be uh, in Hopkinton, hosting Dedham on Tuesday, January 8th, also at 6.30. Nice play. As the bucket rolls in there from Lexi Trendle. 
I believe it'll be um, Hopkinton's first game against Dedham since they joined the TVL conference. I believe this is their first year, so they played them in football, if I recall correctly, but not yet in basketball. Interesting. Ooh, almost a travel. Gill launches a three. In and out. Rattles around. Got to grab it. But active hands poking it around, falling on it was. Good hustle. Was that Hardenbrook? No, that was Fossbender. Good play. Oh, nice play by Caroline. No she got foul wiped out. There. She got like hip checked. It was one. I want to go back to that play from Fossbender though. She she rolled on the ground and she, uh, when she threw the ball there, I don't think she was thrown to anyone in particular. But she knew if she slid a little more, she was going to hit with a travel, and her teammates helped her out there by collecting that ball. But a good play from the freshman. Definitely heads up. Murray's baseline jumper oh, just out. spins out. How did that not go in? I don't know. Hiller's still around here, 33-20. They just need a hoop. Cho driving. No good with the left hand. Grab it. But Trendle grabs the offensive glass. Nice. Tough shot there. Quick whistle on that one as Bean was fighting with McDonald, Cameron McDonald. Good play there again from the junior guard getting involved. Some good energy here. The Athletic Center. Ooh. Show shot, no good. Surrounded by bigger bodies, but she took the contact. Two free throws coming up for the freshman. Lawrence had herself a nice game tonight. First free throw off the mark on that trip. Another one coming. 33 to 20 Westwood lead. Hiller's in the bonus from now on. Uh, 331 left in the fourth. Second free throw finds bottom of the net. 33-21. Oh, there's a there's a tip ball. Oh, too bad. Leads to an easy layup for Fiona McGowan. Westwood taking advantage of the tip. Need a quick hoop. Tip goes to Connell again. Bean takes it away from her. Another turnover for Hopkinton. Wide open. Oh, that's too bad. Killers maybe right, could be a uh, fatigue situation by now. I mean, the, uh, these girls that everyone's played a lot, right? Of, uh, a lot of minutes tonight. The nice and slap there from Roy Cross just just took it out of her hands. Bean, long pass up leads to a layup time, for Gill. Yeah, and like you said, Steve, a timeout there from Coach Greco, but uh, Bean firing the ball up court. Her teammate found Gill, who converted on the lay-in. Just like that, we're back up to an 18-point Westwood lead. Yeah, it was. Uh, there's been a few, few buckets in a, in a very short period of time for Westwood that's extended the lead to 18 points. The Hillers were hanging around, you know, 10, 12 points, or maybe 11 to 13 points for right, right. a while, but they just couldn't get over that. That, uh, that line to get into the single digits, and that's gone, unfortunately gone the other way as the game is winding down here. So 2.39 left, and uh, Westwood up 39-21. And uh, Hillers are gonna certainly play the string out, and right, right. And we'll see how the, how the rest of the game goes. But in the, in the meantime, this, this probably, it, it appears that they're gonna balance their record out in the in the Tri-Valley League to two and two, and then three and, uh, Yep, three and three, three, two, overall, three, and three right. all overall. So a little bit of a reality check here, and you know they've they've run into a couple of really tough teams the right, last two absolutely. games. So it's not <laughs> hopefully they won't don't get too discouraged here. They got a mm -hmm. weekend to. I'm, I'm sure there'll be a practice tomorrow morning. Right. Wow. And then yeah, and then hosting Dedham again for the first time on Tuesday, 6:30 p.m. January 8th. Again, maybe we'll see. I'm not sure what the timetable is as Roycroft with another steal. I'm not sure what the timetable is as a nice pass from Bean, the shot from Ooh. Fleming, no good, but another offensive board. Then Roycroft, a few steps behind the free throw line, knocks down that two-point shot. Hillers just need to, you know, not, not overreact here. Let's work for a good shot. Two minutes or so left in the game. Westwood is... Uh, 
Sort of smells blood almost. You can see they're, they've gotten really aggressive trying nice to. Nice passing there from the Hillers. Lexi Trendle finding the cutting Kiki Fossbender. Great offense there from the Hillers. Yep, that was a heck of a play. Good passing, good finish by the Hillers, yep. Pass inside to Gill, an awkward shot. She couldn't get it, Fossbender with the rebound. And I, I cut myself off earlier, um, a minute ago. I'm not, I'm not sure what exactly the timetable is as Fossbender gets fouled on the shot, uh, what the timetable is for Gladu or Morningstar. But uh, as we mentioned earlier, Morningstar doing the pregame warm-ups for the first time that I've seen this year. Uh, never took off the uh, warm-up shirt and then discarded her, her uh, knee brace earlier. So kind of knew from the get-go that she wasn't going to be out there. But again, good, uh, good to see her out there getting shots up during the pregame. Definitely. And uh, Kiki Fossbender hits the first of two. And, you know, uh, not to... Uh, get too much into my my personal past but I've done I had an ACL a couple of ACL injuries and they and they, it, they do take uh, and I've had them a, a long time ago and and in, in today's uh, environment you can, you can recover more quickly and um, to her credit she's done all her rehab and she's done everything she could to get back um, as quickly as possible but you just don't want to get back uh, too quick uh, a, a, there's a psychological and there's a physical element to the to that so uh, that will always, it's always interesting to see how you, when you initially come back from those types of injuries. There it is. Ooh, that was a walk. Fossbender, yep. Good, good pass from Cho to find it, but Fossbender, a little too excited to get that shot off. Ended up traveling. Not a bad foul there, is it? And then in regards to uh, Olivia Gladu, junior captain, it's just an unfortunate injury before the season started in, in, during practice. Right, and her yeah, elbow just unfortunate accident. Had a tough injury to her elbow. Oh, there's a, oh, un that's unlucky right there. Under a minute now left in this one. Westwood up 18 points, 43 to 25. But we hope Olivia comes back uh, maybe in the next couple of weeks. Is a uh, oh, tough, tough play. Fossbender have been very aggressive these last this last minute and a half. Couldn't get the shot to fall there. But uh, barring something crazy happening here at the end, Westwood's gonna advance to 5-0 overall. 4-0 in the TVL, which is a great mark in the TVL. It's always a tough, tough conference to compete in. While, like you said earlier, Steve Hopkins gonna drop to 3-3 three three overall. 2-2 two two in the Tri-Valley League. Looks like they're gonna be riding a three-game losing streak into that game uh, against Dedham on Tuesday. Show the quick three off the top of the backboard, but Fossbender, offensive rebound. Caroline looking for a shot. 20 seconds left, Cho. Cho drives, looks like she got hung up a bit. Tough shot. Connell dishes it off a little too late to Trendle. Five seconds left, the three, no good. And that should do it here. As the buzzer sounds, again, Hopkinton dropping to 3-3 three and three overall, 2-2 two and two in the TVL. Now Westwood advances to 5-0 and oh overall, 4-0 oh in the TVL. And a, with a 43-25 victory here today. And Steve, again, the uh, offensive struggles of the Hillers, kind of the story of the game again. Yeah, and uh, you know, at the risk of being repetitive, uh, you know, they, they hunt tough with them in the first quarter, first half, and then it just was this slow, slow bleed as the right. second half was going along. But to their credit, they held a really good team to only 43 points. And uh, as as the they, they played them tough in the second half, the 25 to 15 in the second half. Again, very, very young team. And congratulations to both teams. They both played very hard. And uh, I guess we'll see you Tuesday night uh, when, the, when the Hillers host uh, Dedham at home here in the Athletic Center. All right, yeah, we want to, for uh, Steve Spector, I'm Tim Laddick, we want to thank you guys for joining us here again. And we want to thank our crew one last time, Tom Diggs, Samantha Dings, Mary Arnott, Bob Hamilton, and John Ritz. Thank you guys for helping us get through the broadcast, keeping us under control as best you can. And thank you guys again in the audience for watching us. We hope to see you here on Tuesday night.